Welcome again to Advice for Grad Students. I'm your host, Phil Hahn, uh, and today with me is Eleanor Freund. Did I get that right? That's right. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Uh, excellent. So uh, Eleanor is going to be uh, sharing with us uh, how to read a book uh, slash article. So first question to you, Eleanor, why did you pick this topic? Yeah, so I think although it may seem at first glance like somewhat of a basic topic, I think that reading effectively and efficiently is one of the most foundational skills in our profession. It's how we communicate our ideas to one another. And I think that in the first two years of graduate school, many people discover that the way that they read previously in undergrad, for example, does not serve them well in graduate school. So even if you're a fast reader, which you probably have made it into a social science PhD program, you have to learn how to extract key pieces of information without reading every word on the page and every page in the book, because it's just not possible. So I think the ability to read well is in many ways a prerequisite for success in all other areas of academic life, but it's also a skill we often assume that people have. So I thought it was important to share some advice on how to develop that skill as quickly as possible and survive the first two years of coursework. Okay, well, you've convinced me on why it's important. So let's turn to the how. What advice do you give to first and second year grad students? Sure. So I think that uh, there are two things people should really keep in mind when they're reading a book or an article. So the first question you need to ask yourself is, what am I reading this for? So if you're reading for class discussion or for general exams versus your own research, those two different things will require very different levels of engagement and attention with the work. So if you're reading for general exams, for example, you're probably going to want to identify some key pieces of information um, in the most efficient manner. Whereas if you're reading for your own research, you'll probably want to engage in a much deeper way. And in this case, you may very well read every page um, in the book. But um, the first key of advice is to keep your overall objective in mind. And then the second question is, what information should you be looking for? So even if you're reading for research and you're wanting to engage with the work in a much deeper way than you would otherwise, there are still some questions that you're gonna to wanna to identify and think about in every piece of research that you read. So those, those key things you should be looking for are, first, you wanna be able to identify the research question and summarize the overarching argument in about two to three sentences maximum. You also wanna be able to identify the independent and dependent variables and whether the research is driven by variation on the IV or DV. You wanna know what methods are used and you know, broadly what empirical support is offered uh, to advance the argument. And then critically, you also want to be able to situate the argument within existing debates in the literature and identify critiques of the argument um, that could be made of it. So these are really the key pieces of information that you wanna be extracting from every piece of work that you read, whether it's an article or a book, um, whether it's for general exams or it's for your own research. Um, you'll also learn that over time there is a a very standard format that people will write in in many cases. This isn't always true, but it's true in a lot of cases. So you'll learn which parts of the article to go to to find the information that you're looking for. So for example, the introduction will often summarize the overarching argument, while the conclusion will discuss implications for existing conceptual debates and avenues for future research. So as you learn where this information is conveyed, you can often focus your attention there selectively and really save yourself time. Um, and then finally, I would say a few things on the actual mechanics of reading. Um, first, and I think this is something we all struggle with in this day and age, read without distractions. Um, if you want to make the best use of your time, which you have to when you're in coursework, I would recommend that you read without your phone or your laptop anywhere near you. Um, that can break your attention with a notification and can really start to degrade your efficiency when you need to be efficient. So. When I was in coursework, I would leave my laptop and my phone upstairs in the office and I would go down to the library and find a corner and I would just stay there and read until I was done. Um, and I think doing that will really allow you to use your time in an efficient way. And if you find that you're struggling to read an article, I found that having some kind of bookmark or piece of paper um, is very useful and you use it to cover the lines that you're not reading and you really focus on each line that you read and that helps your brain focus on pieces of information when you might be tired about something else. Um, and another way to do this is to bring a pen or a highlighter and use that to selectively highlight or underline as you're reading. Um, my second piece of advice would be 
never read anything without keeping some kind of record of it. Um, this will be different for everyone. And so it's incumbent on you to figure out what works for you. But uh, people use Zotero, they use Evernote, they use Mendeley. Some people will write notes in the margins of PDFs and save those. Uh, but the key point here is that you need to identify a reference manager and then a style of note taking that works for you and then be consistent with that during coursework. Um, for everything you read and put it in your reference manager as you read it, it will save you lots of time later on. And make sure that you have notes on that, that piece of research that you can reference later, even if they're very brief. Um, so those notes should include the pieces of information that I mentioned above, as well as any reactions to the piece that you might have. So did you like the piece? Did you dislike it? Did you think the article missed the point? Um, keep track of your thoughts as you have them because they will be crucial as you prepare for generals. And they're also great places to start to think about dissertation topics. So really keep track of those emotional um, responses that you have to reading things. And I would even recommend creating a folder and starring pieces that really generate a lot of interest or feelings that you have when you read them and put those pieces in the folder and come back to them later on. Uh, it can be really helpful. And then the last thing I'll say is use reading as an opportunity to learn about yourself and how you learn. So think about whether you can understand an argument by reading it by yourself and really just thinking it through, or if you have to engage with other people and kind of debate the key points in order to really understand what is being argued and then maximize whatever is most efficient for you and know that about yourself going forward. Um, also pay attention to how you're formulating your ideas and critiques about the reading. Are you coming up with them while you're reading the piece or is a really great idea coming to you three hours later while you're on a run? Um, these are important cues that I think will be really helpful later on when you're trying to generate your own ideas. And it can be very useful to have a sense of how you're generating those ideas. So I think I'll leave it there for now. Uh, and turn it back to you. All right. Well, you've been very efficient with your time on the front end of this, and you've answered some of the standard questions that I would ask, but a couple pieces kind of stand out to me. I've noticed um, uh, challenges early on and really being able to identify key IVs and DVs. Uh, and you mentioned that, so it's very kind of specific to political science and all. So what kind of, uh, what, how do you go about finding those when quite often some of the research and all that we have, it's not explicit. Yeah, so I think this is something that you develop a sense of over time. So the first thing I would say is do your best to read and identify if it is explicitly stated what um, the dependent variable is, should certainly be stated, and then also what the different factors that are being argued that affect that dependent variable. And then also keep in mind that sometimes people don't say these things because they haven't thought them through. So if you're really struggling to conceptualize an argument and to identify the IV or the DV, it may be the case that the author has not thought it through themselves. And this is a really important place where you can, can critique the work and contribute yourself. All right, that's a really good points on that. And then the, the other question I have is, uh, my, um, I come from a generation of hard copy. Mm. Uh, and so, and you were kind of bringing that up as well. And then, but then you were talking about how you capture that uh, capture that information in some type of electronic form. So, mm -hmm. what's the what do you find is the right balance between uh, the hard copy versus electronic? Um, so, I'm ashamed to say that I printed out almost everything I read in graduate school. Don't be ashamed. Um, join join our club. <laughs> yeah. So for me, that was really helpful because I found that reading on my laptop, uh, you know, there are just too many distractions. Um, and after a while, I found that the strain of looking at a screen for hours on end was not as enjoyable. So what I would do is I would print out articles if I was reading them, and then I would read them, take notes by hand, which would help me process the arguments as I'm reading them. And then I would transfer those notes into a digital um, format. I use Evernote to track to keep all of my notes organized. And that process would really help me identify if I understood what the author was arguing, um, could I put that argument in my own words? And then was it saved in a way that I could easily reference later on? Uh, so that was kind of the format that I used. Okay, and I, actually we got a minute of bonus time here. So I'm gonna ask you one other question, sure. which is, um, yeah, so you talked about articles and books kind of the same way, but books are bigger elephants to eat. And so mm -hmm. do you have any tricks of the trade to try to get to the heart of a book? Sure. So I would say that if you're reading a book and you're really pressed on time, I would start with the introduction and I would start with the conclusion. 
And in many cases, if you're reading a work of political science, there will also be a theory chapter. So I would really focus on those three chapters. And especially in the introduction, you will get a sense of what the empirics are and the methodological approach that is being used. And the, so I would focus on those three chapters and then I would skim the evidence sections. Um, and I think doing that can really help you save time because the, the key information should be in both the introduction and the conclusion. The theory is important to read too. And then it's generally pretty easy to get a sense of what the method is, how much evidence is being presented. And then if you really have time, you can really dig deep and read those chapters in their entirety. Okay, well, great. Well, 10 minutes just flew by like I said it would. Uh, Eleanor, thank you so much for being with us today on Advice for Grad Students. My pleasure. Thank you.